There it goes. All right. All right. So uh, uh, as we as our practice when we met online before, uh, rather than calling for the yeas and nays, I'm only going to say: Is there anybody who is opposed? to approving the meetings, the meeting minutes as they were mailed out around on Tuesday. All right, hearing no opposition, we will consider the, uh, we will consider that so uh, approved. Up next, uh, Mr. Royer with the Treasurer's Report. Did you change the screen yet? There we go. Okay. Yeah. Now, now the now the now the recording is screwing up with screwing with the presenting. All right. Is the screen still sharing now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. So uh, you can see beginning balance seventy six eighty three seventy five. Um, we did have uh, fall apparel, uh, cost of goods. So that's you know the cost of um, the uh, materials we had to uh, sell the um, uh, fall apparel. Uh, we did have some uh, late uh, apparel sales, so we added those, <coughs> added those in there. Um, of course, we had uh, the big purchase for our um, uh, repeaters, uh, repeater equipment. And uh, below that, 50-50 uh, raffle, uh, member donation. Um, we did print up uh, some uh, Sarah event brochures. Um, Jason, I don't know if you talked about that already or maybe we covered that. And we did have um, an expense for uh, Christmas party gifts. And then also uh, we did have uh, some club dues come in uh, on the last line there. Uh, leaving a balance of twenty six fourteen forty three. I uh, that was so long ago, and that it was like a month and a half ago. I forgot all about the brochures. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know how long this will show up here, but this is kind of what they look like. Um, as a just the the QR code takes you to the club website, um, and then it has some information about the club on the back. So those are the brochures. A so, quick side question. Do we have those in hand already or no? Yeah, I've had them for like a month. I got to get them to you. Okay, cool. For the VE session. Thank you. All right. Uh, any, other questions, any other questions on the treasurer's report? All right. Uh, same deal as the meeting minutes. Is there any objection to the treasurer's report as presented? All right. Hearing and seeing no objection, the uh, treasurer's report shall be accepted. Executive committee. Um, we have a couple things from the executive committee. Uh, the first is next at next month's meeting on February 16th, uh, we will be having nominations for officers to be elected at the March 16th meeting. Those are the officers that will take office for the term beginning April 1st, 2023, uh, going through the end of March in 2024. Uh, I am stepping down and will not be running again, as is Stefan. Uh, so the, the president and vice presidency is open. Uh, our treasurer, Jeff, uh, has said that he would he will serve one more year as the club treasurer. So we'll need a treasurer in 2024. And then, Ross, I hate to put you on the spot, um, but I didn't hear back from you. Um, I wondered if you were planning on continuing as secretary for next year. Well, if somebody else wants to do it. If you got nobody, I guess I have to. If somebody wants to nominate somebody, I won't object. Okay. But, um, yeah, I, that's okay. All right. So, with that, um, be thinking about who might be a make a good leader uh, for the club. Um, we, you know, we, we do have a lot of support. Um, you know, even as Stefan and I are not going to be officers, I'll be 
on the executive committee still as the immediate past president. Uh, Stefan will still be leading VE exams, so there'll be lots of support. So if you uh, are interested in helping out the club, uh, you don't have to be super good at radio. You don't have to be the most technical person. Uh, we just need, uh, as we used to call it, uh, the chief cat herder. So uh, if you think you can herd some cats, uh, the, uh, some of these roles might be good for you. So something to think about coming up in February. Uh, any questions on the officer elections? All right. Um, we did put out the membership survey uh, back in December. Uh, out of the membership, we got uh, 44 responses, which is about a little, a little under a third of the club members uh, responded to the survey, uh, which is actually a fairly good uh, response for a survey of this type. Um, a couple of the uh, statistics that we thought were interesting, looking at this in the executive committee, 78% um, of the respondents had come to at least one meeting, uh, and all 100% of those respondents liked the meeting content. Uh, so that uh, shows us that the people who are coming to the meeting are enjoying the meetings. 64% of the respondents participated in at least one operating event. Uh, half of the respondents were active on the repeater at least a few times a week, if not daily. I think it was about 27% were a few times a week and 20 or 30, I'm sorry, 30, how would that add up? No, 27% and 23%. I think 23% was daily. So uh, almost 50% of the people were active on the repeater. Um, and the biggest area of focus for the club going into 2023 uh, they were, the, the survey said they'd like to see a greater uh, support and focus on at-home operating. Uh, so the executive committee was talking about what maybe uh, some build projects and some other activities might be that uh, kind of furthers that goal. And uh, we'll probably see some more movement on that here uh, coming up in uh, the coming days of 2023. Meeting location. Um, so this is the story probably many of you have been waiting to hear. Um, why aren't we at Finney's? Or at least most of us aren't at Finney's. Um, we, I had reached, I, I had been working with the, uh, the daytime and catering manager at Finney's since we started there. I had spoken with her in November. Uh, we had, I thought we had booked all of 2023. Um, I have, I had, I, they've recently been rolled off, but I had text confirmation that we had been booked uh, for 2023. Uh, when I finally got in touch with them, because I was calling about that goofy thing with the back door from November, I was informed that we did not have a reservation for today, nor for any time this year. Uh, they said the manager we worked there was no longer there, uh, kind of gave off a weird vibe, like, we had been somehow doing something wrong by working with the manager. It was, it was a very odd conversation. Um, and, and the bottom line was uh, not only would they not be able to accommodate us today, um, but they were essentially retracting the deal that we had worked at last year, where, which was we were going to bring in, you know, 30 some odd people on an off night for a bar uh, and provide them with some business and they were going to insist on a $250 per time room rental fee, as well as put a mandatory 20% gratuity on all of the bills. Um, so I pretty much said, uh, well, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to do that. Um, that's, a, yeah, that's a lot of money. And uh, quite honestly, I was a little uh, irked at both the tone of the conversation that we were somehow taking advantage of them and the implication that we were somehow uh, bad tenants uh, such that, because she made a comment about they were having problems with room cleanups and things like that. Well, um, you know, I, I had checked in every month with the staff after the meeting and said, is everything okay? Are people tipping well? Did we miss any bills? Never had a complaint. So, not sure what's going on, uh, but 
it definitely was, uh, it's definitely uh, not a venue we're going to return to as a club. Um, so what does that mean? So finding a low cost meeting location for a group our size is not easy. Um, we are bigger as an average attendance in a meeting than most of the free or low cost rooms, especially at restaurants, community centers, things like that. Um, you know, even the library, uh, we're bigger than what we can really fit in there. Um, we did have space in the Wadsworth Public Library in room A. Uh, the problem with which is why we left the library um, was they would only book us out a quarter in advance. And um, we, uh, we were not guaranteed a predictable date and time to meet. Uh, and uh, during the school year, especially, uh, their pro programs came first, which get which you know again we get it right. I mean it's their it's their facility to support their uh, programs, but that just doesn't really work for us. Um, you know, a nominal fee might be palatable for the club, but not two hundred and fifty dollars a night. So at the moment, and hopefully this is a one time only thing, but we're socializing it just in case it's not. Uh, because it did take us quite a while to find Finney's <laughs> uh, as a meeting location. Uh, hopefully, being on Zoom is a short-term thing. Um, <clears throat> we're planning on continuing to have the meeting somewhere in the Norton Wadsworth area. That still is sort of the geographic center of the club membership. Um, we might have to get a little outside of that, depending on what we find and what we're willing to eat as a club for the cost. And we will probably have to return to a uh, food as separate format. So if you remember uh, where we were at before, um, you know, we, people would usually eat at um, Penn Station, uh, or no, I'm sorry, not Penn Station. Um, Sub sandwich shop, sub shop. Yeah, substation sandwich shop and then come over to the library for the meeting. We'll probably, probably, but not definitely be back to that just because, you know, we had really exhausted the food venues. And again, with a club our size, the issue is, is no one wants us to order off the menu. They want to do a, a catering like arrangement. Um, so, and, and, that, and that's, that again would be cost prohibitive for people. So that's kind of where we're at with the meeting location. Um, any questions on that? All right. Um, the last item of business I had, uh, the technical committee, um, we still have to get the uh, NXRs installed. I, I do have to apologize to the club. I had every intention of getting that installed over uh, my Christmas uh, vacation time that I was taking off from work. And for a variety of reasons that are somewhat justifiable and some that are probably just didn't get to it, um, th that did not get installed. Um, I have it all programmed and ready to go. I just have to get it out there. So that'll, I'm hoping to get that done here by the end of the month. Um, and that will be the installation of the NXR 710, as well as replacing all of the old coax cable with all of the new um, double-shielded high-strength coax that we purchased from ABR Industries a couple months ago. Um, I did want to mention we are still looking for a volunteer to direction find the noise on the 275 machine. Um, there is some sort of local but not on site uh, interference. Um, it's not heard any, you know, far away from the repeater. It's something that's getting into the, into the repeater from nearby. Uh, so it might be an easy one. Just need someone who wants to trudge around and figure it out. So uh, any uh, any commentary or questions on the technical committee report or semi-report? All right. Will you need, uh, will you need help with that? Because I mean, I'd be glad to help when you're ready to do the install. Um, the install, I, I can let you know. I mean, it's. It's pretty much a one-person job, but yeah, I can I can let you know. 
So, um, uh, anything else? All right, with that, that was really all we had uh, for the business meeting. Um, so our next meeting um, will be location TBD uh, on February 16th at 7 p.m. Um, I also have a question mark in here for special topics. We are looking for some people to do some different presentations this year for the club. Um, as I said in other, in other forums, um, you know, you don't have to be an expert presenter. You don't have to have a live demo. You don't have to have um, great detailed or precise um, presentation materials. Um, we can even help with that. Um, but we're really looking for people to share some interesting things they found along their ham radio journey. Um, you know, if you have a short topic um, that maybe really wouldn't fill up a lot of time, uh, we can look at uh, doing two uh, two quick topics in one night. Uh, but if people are interested in that, we would really love to get some variety uh, on the stage for the club, so to speak. I have one more thing when you... Uh, yeah, go ahead, Stefan. So we have a VE session coming up the first Saturday of February, and I believe that's the 4th or 5th, and that's in Wayne County. Let me look really quick. That is the 4th. Um, before... Before the uh, meeting today, I looked up and I told uh, Doug and uh, Bill that I was going to delete the previous month's people, which I was doing. That's why I was off camera, because I didn't want all the paperwork and stuff shuffling. Um, currently, we don't have any test takers, but that doesn't that that changes as we go. But what I'd like to say to Dave and everybody else who is one of our uh, net control people, please, starting now, advertise the heck out of the VE session, not that we have to, but it would be nice to just, every if we can send that message out, Dave, every net, just announce it. And when I get on in the barometer net, I announce it anyways, you know, that we have such and such a weekends away until our next test session. Just so people know, and we make uh, Wayne County a good uh, a session for the beginning of the year, that would be nice. But right now there's not anybody, but like I said, that changes and, I'll be there regardless if there's nobody signed up because you never know if you're going to get walk in. So I'm, I'm a trooper when it comes to that stuff. Hey, Stefan, did, did we get posted on the ARRL's website? Cause I noticed that the Ohio section journal again is not listing our V exams. I will double check with Stephanie, but I did send her information. I'll send her again and then make sure that she gets it out there. Yeah, because I because I, I did a quick search and I don't see it. If I put in Wadsworth zip code, I don't see I don't see our sessions listed there either. Okay, let me double check with her. But I did send everything out, and maybe something happened. But let me get that into into works, and then I'll have that by by the yeah. weekend, hopefully. Yeah, it's it's definitely not on the it's definitely not on the ARL site. The first the first exam session for twenty twenty three in our area is listed as CFARCS in end of February. No worries. I'll be. I'm. I'm on it. Cool. Yeah. So I'm just. I'm just saying that might be why we're not getting any. I, I think the league's having problems with the website's age. <laughs> I'm sure that's not helping. So. Uh, you might want to uh, send that information to the section manager uh, directly to make sure it gets in. I can do that, or I we send it to Stephanie because she's our VE coordinator and she usually handles that. But either way, I can do a double thing. I suspect uh, you need to do it directly to the section manager to make sure it gets through. And any other uh, club announcements and uh, material probably ought to go to the section manager because he totally ignores Sarah. All right. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, Zeke. All right. Any other business for the club before we adjourn? Jason? Yeah. Um, that recording? Yeah. You can, all I, that's all I need. I, I'm going to the whole thing and I'll upload it to YouTube and it'll be in the same place all the rest of them are. Oh, okay. 
That sounds like a good idea. So, all right. With that, um, I will declare that Jeff WATB has made a motion to adjourn, and that Zeke, who's the next person down on my window, has seconded it. Uh, is there any op opposition to adjourning the club meeting? Remember, if there's opposition now, you might be called on to be president. <laughs> So. All right, with that, uh, again, thanks everybody for your flexibility with this. Uh, I am going to stop sharing here, and I believe then that Ken should be able to directly take over. And I will turn it over to him, K A 8 O A D, and uh, let him, uh, he's going to bring us some information on the use of Winwick. Very good. All right, let me. Uh... Get in here. <laughs> let's let's try this again. <laughs> Take two. Uh, so anyway, I was talking about Senate Bill 288. Uh, if you want to download the bill, uh, that is the uh, URL you can use. It's it's a long one, I know. Uh, it's not as long as the bill. The bill is 499 pages long. Uh, the actual uh, distracted driving part of the bill starts on page 388. But what you're looking for is page 391 and 392. That spells out the uh, information that I'm going to pass along here. Um, a lot of amateur radio operators talked to their representatives and convinced the representatives that this wasn't good for amateur radio to not have us be able to use our radios in our vehicles, especially in an emergency or something like that. Uh, so we actually, uh, they put an addendum in the bill that has actually allows us to use our radios without having to be um, fined or pulled over for our using our radios. So, uh, so we've been given uh, immunity basically. <laughs> and the the uh, the part of the bill, the exemption is uh, it reads this way. So the exemption reads. Uh, any other substantially similar wireless device that is designed or used to communicate, text, text, initiate, or receive communication, or exchange information or data. An electronic wireless communication device does not include a two-way radio transmitter or receiver used by a person who is licensed by the Federal Communications Commission to participate in the amateur radio service. So there you go. So we basically have been given an exemption to that law. Um, now I went ahead and I printed off about 40 copies of this, double-sided <laughs> copies of those two pages, but I was planning on passing them out at the meeting tonight, but I guess I'll pass them out later. Um, but it was suggested that you keep a copy of that addendum in your car with you just in case you're pulled over. Now, I don't know that that's going to help. My guess is the police officer, uh, depending on what kind of a day he is having, he may be okay with it, and he may say, just tell it to the judge. But <laughs> anyway, uh, it is what it is. Uh, we have been given an exemption to the uh, distracted driving law, so good for us. So that's all I have on that. And now I'll go ahead and get into the meat of the program here. So I'm going to talk about WinLink tonight, um, or otherwise known as WL2K, WinLink2K, which is Global Radio Email. So I'm going to talk about uh, uh, what WinLink is, how WinLink works, what software you need, what software is required, and then we'll also do some demonstrations here. And, and hopefully, if things go well, I'll be able to connect to my uh, trans transceiver in the shack, and we'll be able to do some live RF uh, uh, demonstrations. If not, we may have to just do it Telnet, but uh, we'll, we'll give that a go, too. So what is WinLink? Well, WinLink was originally designed for maritime mobile use. Why does my screen keep going back? WinLink was originally designed for maritime mobile use to send global email messages via radio from onboard ships at sea. Today, WinLink, or WL2K, functions as a worldwide messaging system that uses amateur band radio frequencies and authorized Mars, military auxiliary radio system, government stations to provide radio pathway emails, and more. Uh, 
<coughs> Winlink is capable of Winlink is capable of functioning independently of the internet. There's a, a good point there. Uh, no requirement for the internet. And it can be used to pass attachments, position reporting, weather bulletins, emergency communications, and various types of forms using its built-in library of form templates. And I'll show you some of those forms, and we'll discuss how you get to those forms. And uh, I'm going to discuss how to fill them out, but uh, we'll talk about the forms a little bit. So WinLink can also transfer messages between systems with different capabilities, like HF, VHF, UHF, or even a standard email client. So, so WinLink is very flexible in that. Um, I can send over HF, I could send a email client an email, and when that person opens their email, they would get my email message that I sent through the WinLink system. Likewise, if somebody sends me an email to my WinLink email address, uh, when I bring up WinLink and connect to WinLink, WinLink would automatically download any new email waiting for me, and I'd have that email. And you could do that, you know, I could be on HF and do it, I could be on VHF, UHF. Um, all of those modes will work with WinLink uh, independently, so there's nothing, you know, it's all um, a very good way of passing traffic. So like regular email, WinLink messages are sent to a specific address and may contain file attachments, pictures, files, forms, etc. Uh, these messages can be sent between Win WinLink stations and normal SMTP POP3 email addresses. So, for instance, my WinLink station's address is k8oad at winlink.org. Uh, one of my home addresses is k8oad at neo.r.com. So I could pass messages between my k8oad at winlink org uh, address and my k8oad at neo.r.com address either way. I could either send myself an email from, at, from winlink to home or from home to my winlink. Uh, and then, of course, you can send other WinLink addresses, uh, like n1ezz at winlink.org, that's George's, nafqp at winlink.org, that's Ted's, ke8jnh at winlink.org, that's Doug's. Uh, and I'm sure there's other people that use WinLink out here. I apologize if I left you out, but those three people I know use WinLink pretty much on a regular basis, including myself, so I just thought I'd throw them in there. And then many government organizations will use tactical addresses for WinLink. So tactical address are, addresses are available and can be used. Um, I know that the uh, EMA in um, Tennessee uses TEMA as their tactical. Uh, I don't know what Ohio uses. I couldn't find that information. I think Ohio EMA probably uses OEMA because most of the... Uh, uh, Emergency transmissions and things that come out of uh, the EMA in Ohio usually have OEMA attached to them, so I'm guessing that might be their tactical, but, but, but don't uh, quote me on that one. I'm, I'm not real sure. Okay, so because of its complete lack of commercial dependency, WinLink is widely used in MCOM situations. It makes a great backup communication system, especially when using HF. It also isn't dependent on sending only to other amateurs, and since it integrates fully with regular email servers, it makes for an ideal system when communication is down in one area but not another. So, for instance, let's say we had some kind of an outage in Northeast Ohio. Everything was down, all communications. But they had communications in Columbus. Well, I could send with WinLink uh, an email to the Ohio EOC in Columbus. If, there are, if they are up and running and they have communications, then I could actually use WinLink to send an email to the EMA in Columbus. Uh, so that's just one example of how that can work. Uh, if, if maybe one, uh, one place is out of communications and another is still has communications. Uh, and just to show how much the government is involved with WinLink and how important it is to them, uh, our uh, Region 5 FEMA, that's, that's our region, in case you didn't know, we're, we're in FEMA Region 5. They run a WinLink drill every other Sunday where stations are asked to provide information in a form and then use WinLink to send the information to the FEMA Region 5 net manager. 
Now, I know um, there are a few of us that actually participate in that drill. Um, myself and George and Ted and Doug all participate in that drill. Um, if you want to participate in the drill, we'd love to have additional people participate. All you have to do is just send me an email with your uh, uh, send me an email to my email address, and it could be the k8oid at winlink.org or the k8oid at neo.r.com, either one. Uh, and let just let me know you'd be interested. Um, and then what they do a couple of days before the actual drill, they send out an email that tells you what the drill is going to be and basically goes step by step through actually uh, doing a full on um, form. They tell you exactly how to fill out the form, how to get to the form, what form you're gonna use. Uh, it's really very easy to do if you just follow their step by step uh, information that's in the email. It's very easy to, uh, to get a uh, WinLink form set up and, and sent to them. So if you're interested, um, and you can send the form either RF or Telnet. Uh, they prefer RF because they like to know, you know, what kind of RF coverage they can get uh, around the uh, the Region Five area. But but you can send it tel Telnet as well. Uh, and I don't know if anybody else is is doing that or not. But uh, again, it's just. In fact, let me see. I'm going to try something here that probably I'm probably going to hate. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, maybe not. Hang on one second. Let's see if I can bring up. There we go. See my emails? Are you seeing my email client? Hello? Yes, we are. Hello? Yes, we are. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to uh, bring up the last last week's uh, WinLink Net, or actually uh, it was on the 8th. Uh, uh, let me see if that will come up. So this is what it looks like when you receive an email from FEMA. And like I said, it's very simple to just follow the steps. They tell you exactly what you need to do, exactly what uh, boxes in the form you need to out. They go through everything, and then on Sunday, you fill out that you uh, send the, f the form to them. Now, I usually fill the form out on, like, Saturday and just have it ready to go. And then when Sunday comes, all I have to do is bring up my radio and, and connect to a, a message server, an RMS server, and then the, the email gets sent. So, uh, But if you're interested, we can certainly use additional people to help with that. So... Oops. Again. Uh, and anyway, uh, so there's also an organization for MCOM training that runs a WinLink training program. Uh, they call it WinLink Thursdays. Uh, their address is https slash slash uh, forward slash forward slash emcom dash training dot org. And I'll bring up their website too. They're actually in kind of a hiatus right now. They're, they're, um, I can get to it. Come on. Hang on a sec here. There we go. Okay. So this is their website coming up here. Um, again, it's ecomtraining.org. They had paused the uh, WinLink training in February, so it gives you plenty of time to get your WinLink system set up, uh, get the software downloaded, and start uh, getting things connected and ready to start working uh, before they they fire up their program again. Now, they actually follow uh, WinLink Thursdays. They have, um, for FEMA, we send to the FEMA coordinator's address. Instead of sending to an email address for these people, they actually have what they call clearing houses. So you send to the clearing house address for your FEMA region. Again, we'd be FEMA 5, and they follow the FEMA regions. In fact, if you go down here, they actually have a FEMA map. So you can see with the breakdown of uh, FEMA there.
And oh, they also let you PD. Uh, they also have a PDF for download of the FEMA map if you're interesting in, interested in downloading a PDF file and uh, having the FEMA map available. Uh, and then you go down and you find your tactical address. So we are FEMA Region 5, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. And we are tactical address ETO-05. So instead of sending to an address, you would send to this tactical address. So again, tactical addresses are perfectly acceptable in uh, FEMA, in uh, WinLink. And you don't have to add, if you're sending to an address that's on the WinLink system, which these would be, and which anybody's WinLink um, email would be, you don't need to add the at winlink.org. You can just add just the, 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 you know, the actual address name. You don't have to add the at WinLink. So if you were sending like, uh, if I sent like to George directly through WinLink, I wouldn't have to put n1ezz at winlink.org. I could just put n1ezz, and the system would understand that I'm looking to send it to a winlink address. So, but that's uh, that's the way they do their tactical calls for, for this. Uh, and I want to show you. This is funny. Uh, this was uh, the winlink assignment for Christmas. And I, I got a I got a kick out of it because what they they were doing they wanted you to send an equipment request to Santa Claus, <laughs> so they ask you to do to fill out a ICS dash two one three RR, and uh, that's actually a resource request. So it's an ICS two thirteen resource request, and they want you to send it to Santa Claus. So again, what they will do is they have instructions. And they're very well detailed instructions. They give you, you know, step by step what you have to do. Let me see if this is going to come up. Hello. There we go. Okay, so uh, they have a summary, and then they go through the actual. Um, information so they tell you you know to make sure you use the correct clearinghouse address for your location and they just give you some extra information that you know make sure you know what you're doing uh, then they actually come up with instructions and so they tell you how to get to the template they want you to use the ICS 213 RR template and a lot of times they'll even have a file that you can download which they have for this one where uh, you download that file you open the template, and then the template has a place where you can take a text file and insert the text file into the template, and it'll fill out some of the of the uh, uh, boxes in the form. So you don't necessarily. So sometimes they have part of the form already filled out for you, so you don't have to fill out everything. Uh, and once you're done, oh, and they also wanted you to attach a photograph. So so again, you're get, you're doing a couple of different things with WinLink. But it gives you good training. It's it's a good training exercise to learn how to do forms, how to learn how to do attachments. Um, and then once you're ready to go, uh, you use the tactical address Santa, S-A-N-T-A. -A. So, <laughs> so they had a special tactical address with Santa. And then they said in here, if you, you can CC yourself and your significant other if you want to send a hint. So if you have a radio you're interested in getting for Christmas, you could uh, send your significant other a, uh, an email along with the uh, Santa email uh, with the uh, information about the, uh, the item that you wanted. And then they actually show you the form. They highlight the sections that you need to complete, and they explain what you need to put in there. Uh, like 11, make up and use make up or use a real phone number for your favorite amateur radio supplier for the supplier. Uh, for 12, name of supplier, name of your amateur radio favorite amateur radio supplier. Uh, and then the very last one I love, the finance section chief name is make one up or spouse. So. <laughs> <laughs> For those of us who are married, I'm sure you can understand the spouse being the finance section chief. <laughs> but anyway, um, so they do this, and then what they'll do is they will um, grade these. When you send one in, they will give you a grade. You can get 100% max, and then if you mess something up or forget it to put in a 
field or you send it to the wrong clearhouse address or things like that, uh, they'll take so many points off your grade. So you actually get kind of an idea how well you're doing this. How, you know, what, what did you mean? And they tell you when they grade form, they say, you know, you missed filling out um, this uh, box on this form uh, or such and such. And, and then actually they show everybody, and I don't know why my network's going so slow. I zoom, uh, and then they'll actually show everyone that sent a form in, and they'll actually that got a grade of zero. So he must have made everything wrong. Um, let's just see here. Okay, so he got a grade of ten. Uh, and the explanation was he didn't have an image attachment, so he forgot to attach an image. Uh, he had no text attachment, so he forgot to send attach the form. Uh, and then something about comments should be zero, not twenty-one. So uh, <laughs> he didn't do a very good job of filling out the form. But hey, maybe it was his first time, and maybe he was just learning. And uh, you know, we all start somewhere. So, uh, but like I said, it's just kind of a nice way to learn how to do this, and then and, and learn by you learn by your mistakes. You know, just. Uh, Learn by your mistakes. So here's a, a station in Anchorage, Alaska, and he got a perfect 100. Perfect grade 100, and explanation was a perfect score. So he had everything right. Uh, and as you can see, there aren't a lot of perfect scores, but um, but there are a few. So that's, uh, that's Winlink Thursdays. And that's with the emcomtraining.org group. So what you do for email with WinLink is email, email is normally sent from a client station, which is your station, through a radio message server system, which they call an RMS system, as RF gateways to a common message server or CMS system connected to the internet. Now, for the common message server, they're using uh, the... Um, AWS, the Amazon Web Services. So they're using AWS for their web, their message servers. Uh, you can also send messages using a peer-to-peer -peer connection between two client stations within RF range, allowing for direct message transfers with no infrastructure. I've done this a couple times. I'm not great at it. I want to get some more practice. So hopefully someone will step up and say, hey, I want to learn how to do peer-to-peer. -to -peer. How about uh, we do it together or something and we uh, we learn how to do peer-to-peer -to -peer together. <laughs> I have done it a couple times, but it's a little bit, there's a little more to it than uh, just doing a WinLink message. And of course, we have to remember we're using the amateur bands to send traffic. So FCC rules still apply. You know, no encryption, no commercial traffic and third-party rules still apply. And this is basically just a uh, diagram of the entire WinLink system. So you have the Amazon Web, Web Services, the AWS Cloud. That's your CMS system. That's your common message server. And then you have the internet, of course, connected to Amazon Web Services. And then connected to the internet, you're going to have all of these RMS stations. And there's a couple here. K7BCE-10 is an RMS, RMS station. N2LEE is an RMS station. There's a ton of other ones. And I'll show you how to find the RMS stations once we get into the software. Uh, if you don't want to go through RF or you can't go through RF, you can go through your ISP and you can just use your regular internet connection at home as your RMS station uh, going through your internet service, internet service provider. Then on the other side of the RMS stations, you have your client stations. And I'm just threw in uh, George's call and Doug's call and Ted's call in here. And I would be in here, of course, too. But the, the client station then uses RF either HF, VHF, or UHF, to pass the message traffic to one of the RMS stations, which in turn sends that traffic via the internet to the Amazon Web Services cloud. Now, again, if you're using ISP, you'd just be sitting at your computer and you just telnet in via your computer. And I'm going to telnet in here um, for, for one demonstration, then we're going to try to connect to the radio and do another demonstration over RF. 
So there are some limitations uh, using VHF, UHF, you are, why it keeps doing that? Using VHF, UHF, you are limited by your proximity to an RMS gateway or a digipeter. Um, there aren't many RMS gateways around this area. There is one in Barberton that is VHF. So there's a VHF FM RMS gateway in Barberton, um, which is nice. That's fairly close to most of us. Uh, using HF, obviously the band conditions are going to be a limitation. You know, if the band conditions are good or bad, you may have to find a, a different uh, RMS server to connect to. I've never had a trou trouble not connecting to an RMS server somewhere on some band. Uh, hey, usually you can find. Yes. Again, John Wagner, as yes. Wayne Techno Fanatics has run a, a WinLink server for years. I just put the. Oh, really? I just put the link in the in the chat. Um, it has really oh, good coverage and is up twenty four seven, and I know a number of people use it. So that's weird. He doesn't he doesn't appear in any of the databases. That's strange. Okay, I, well, that's good to know. The, I didn't know, I didn't know there was a WinLink database for VHF ones. So <laughs> he appears in yeah, the um, he appears in the packet WinLink because I use I use his site all the time for packet. Okay, I'm sorry, packet. Okay, packet win link. All right, I, I didn't look at the uh, packet win link stuff. So, okay, that would make sense then. Um, anyway, okay, so we do have some others out there. Good. Um, and the win link system does limit you to 128K maximum message size, including any attachments. So you're not going to send a, a five megabyte picture across WinLink. Uh, <laughs> you have to limit yourself. Um, you can send pictures, but uh, they have to be small in size. Uh, and just a note, this has nothing to do with limitations, but uh, WinLink does have full error correction, and it only requires a beginning and ending handshake. So larger messages actually have better throughput than sending smaller blocks of data. I just threw this one in here. This was a <laughs> uh, this was a picture that was sent by non ham by a non ham Winlink uh, during the a TEMA recon to Kentucky Kentucky during an ice storm. And again, the TEMA was the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency. They sent a recon uh, team to Kentucky during one of the ice storms. But uh, I thought the picture was awesome, so I had to add it. Uh, they had no cell phone. They had no landline. They had no satellite. They had no microwave. They had no VHF, UHF, 800 or 700 megahertz public safety service. All they had was a mobile HF with SSB, and that's what they used to uh, send the pictures back to the, uh, the EMA. So a couple of questions and answers. Do I need to register for WinLink? No. All you have to do is send a successful message via RF or Telnet, either one, and when you s send a message, you will be assigned your own winlink.org address, which consists of your call sign at winlink.org. So again, like K8OAD at winlink.org is mine. And that registers you on the system. So you do not have to actually physically register for a, a winlink address. Uh, does WinLink have standard forms? Yeah, we kind of discussed that a little bit already. Just like FL Digi, WinLink has multiple forms for many of our served agencies, and many of the standard ICS forms are included. So equipment required? Well, obviously, you're going to need a PC or a laptop, uh, an iPhone or an Android phone. Um, and uh, the iPhone, they actually just came out with a new uh, version of WinLink that will run on an iPhone. I don't think it will run on the tablets. Um, they don't really have it designed for tablet use, but uh, it will run on the iPhone. Um, but they also have Android. Now, I'm a Windows guy, so I'm just going to be talking about Windows tonight, and I'm just going to be discussing you know, WinLink Express, which we'll get into here in a minute. Uh, for a uh, internet only connection, if you don't have an RF connection or you don't have the ability to do an RF connection, you can still use a Telnet connection as long as your internet is up. 
uh, to get into it. So you don't necessarily need a radio, but obviously if it's going to be an emergency situation, likely, you know, the internet's probably going to be down. Everything's probably going to be down. So RF is probably going to be your only option. Uh, and speaking of which, if you do RF, uh, obviously you're going to need an HF, VHF, or UHF radio with a data port connected either to a PACTOR modem, uh, a terminal node controller, or a microphone speaker connected to a sound card interface like a signal link. Um, now, you don't need full control of the radios as long as you can get audio in and out you would manually, you'd have to manually tune the radio to the frequency you're going to use for the RMS station. Uh, that would be manual, but everything else, you know, uh, audio in and out, you could still do. Um, now, my radios and most of the newer radios uh, have USB connections on the back that do everything. They give you the uh, the control, the radio control, and they also have a built-in uh, uh, sound card that gives you your audio in and out. So if you have a newer radio, it may be a lot easier just to connect uh, that. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't like a IC seventy three hundred. Um, I have an IC ninety one hundred. It just has a UHF port on the back. A seventy one hundred has a UHF. Or I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> a UHF, a USB port. Uh, it has a USB port on the back of the radio, and you just plug that into the computer with a driver, and you're pretty much set to go. And and then the uh, software controls the radio completely. It'll set the frequency for you. It'll do everything. Uh, also, if you're using a signal link in, signal link interface, you will not get full speed. That's something to be aware of. So the software that's required, you need some kind of Winlink client software. Uh, there are a bunch out there. I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, some of them are pretty old. Uh, the iOS uh, iPhone software is Radio Mail. That was just recently released, I think. Um, I don't think it's been around very long. Uh, but there's an Android app for Android phones. Um, and then Winlink Express, which is the really the one that's re recommended for Windows. Uh, that's the one I use, and I think most people use WinLink Express. Um, but that's what I'm going to be talking about and, and working with tonight. Now, most of the interfaces are fairly similar. So, you know, one WinLink Express, uh, the w WinLink Express interface is probably going to look a lot like a lot of these other clients out there. They're, the client software seems to they try to keep it pretty uh, much the same so you are familiar with it if you go from one to another. So again, WinLink Express was formerly RMS Express. That's what's recommended. Um, and then if you don't have a, a, a TNC or a modem, a PACTOR modem or a, a terminal node controller, you can use a software emulated TNC, which is called Vera. Uh, and there's more of those out there too, but Vera seems to be the software emulated TNC of choice. Um, it works very, very well. Uh, they have one version for HF and then they have another one for FM, for VHF, UHF. Um, but those two pieces of software are the only thing you need. Uh, now, neither one of those are, um, you don't have to purchase either one. WinLink Express does have a NAG uh, window that comes up. If you don't, if you haven't purchased WinLink Express, uh, when, when you first launch it, it comes up with this little NAG window that waits 10 seconds before you can use it and just kind of nudges you like, hey, you haven't, you know, haven't actually purchased this software. Uh, they don't care if you don't purchase it. You just have to deal with that little nag window every uh, time you, you launch WinLink Express. And I think to purchase it, purchase it, if I remember right, it was like $25, and that's like for a lifetime. So really, it's not a, a real expensive product. Uh, Vera software, on the other hand, is a little expensive. It's about $70 to purchase. Uh, once again, you don't have to purchase Vera software, but if you don't purchase a license for Vera software, it will not run at full speed. So you'll be um, running at, slow, at a slower speed with Vera, which obviously takes longer to pass uh, data and such. But, uh, but again, you don't necessarily have to um, purchase it. But it's not a bad idea. Hey, hey, Ken. Just, yeah. If I can just jump in there. I'll, I'll second the the Vera for especially for HF 
Um, I, I bought that a little while back. And if you want to, if you want to be even semi serious with HF Winlink, um, the 60 bucks or whatever it is to license Vera HF is well, well worth it. Um, so I just wanted to toss that out there as a, as a, as a second on the Vera HF recommendation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, agree. Totally agree. I'm sure everybody else would probably agree with you too. Um, and yeah, please, if, if you have a question, just jump in there and sh shout it out and stop me. I obviously can't see people, so I can't see somebody raising their hand or something. But uh, but yeah, Vera is probably out of all the uh, emulated TNC software out there. I think it's probably one of the better ones. And for some of us old timers, uh, the Winmore protocol has been depreciated and is now being replaced by protocols such as the Amateur Radio Digital Open Pro Pro Protocol, RDOP, and Vera HF. And RMS gateways will only support RDOP, Vera HF, and PACTOR 3 or 4 uh, near term. So if you've been running Winmore, you're going to have to move to a newer, different protocol because the uh, RMS server is no longer support pro uh, the Winmore protocol. So that's for some of our older folks that might have been doing WinLink for a long time. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it here because I'm sure you're tired of listening to me ramble on. And I'm going to bring up – there I am. So I'm going to bring up WinLink here. It takes just a couple seconds to load. Okay, so this is WinLink. Is everybody seeing it? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> just making sure. Okay, so this is actually the WinLink um, program. Uh, there's not too much to in uh, to actually set up WinLink. Um, you go to the settings and you go to WinLink Express setup. I'm not going to go there because the license um, information, they don't gray out or uh, have, they have it, the license information on the screen and I don't want everybody in the world seeing this video and using my license for their WinLink. So <laughs> I'm not going to go to that setting screen, <laughs> but uh, basically you need to give it your call sign, a password, an email address in case you forget your password, and then a um, your grid square, and then just other items that aren't necessary, but they allow you to put in like your name and your address and your another email address if you want to use a, a different email address for uh, for something and uh, that kind of stuff. So really, as long as you get your your call sign and a password and an email address to reset the password and your grid square in the uh, configuration. That's really about all you need. So over in this box here next to where it says open session, right now you see it says Vera HF WinLink. So this is where you actually select what type of connection you're going to make to the WinLink system. So you'll see up at the very top, we have Telnet. Then we've got the packet, PacTor WinLink, Robust Packet WinLink, RDOP, Vera HF, Vera FM, Iridium. Um, and then you have your P2P settings. So if you're going to go P2P with another station, then you would use these settings for Again, Vera HF P2P or Vera FM P2P. Um, and then I'm not exactly sure what the Telnet, what, what the radio only things are. Uh, I don't, I've never used them. I don't, I'm not sure what they are. But you would basically at this point, you would select which network or you're going or which way you're going to into the uh, WinLink system. And then you would hit open session and that would actually start your session. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to go ahead. As you can see, oh, let me uh, just give you a, a quick rundown of the rest of the display here. So you've got your inbox. You just see how right now I have nothing in my inbox. It's empty. Red items, I don't have anything. Uh, sent items, I do have four sent items. 
and and obviously these items will grow. I don't use this computer much for Winlink. I use a, the computer in my shack. Uh, this is a laptop. I use this occasionally uh, when I'm doing remote, but uh, so that's why there's not a whole lot in there. Um, do you see some of the things that we've sent? Uh, this is a, a weather um, form. So I sent, I filled out a weather form and sent it to myself, basically. Drop and link. Um, but right now, nothing in my inbox. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm gonna select Telnet WinLink, and we're going to Telnet in. Now I have a. Uh, I know I have a email waiting in my inbox. So you may have a few waiting. Open for you. session. Oh, <laughs> okay. I may have a few. Well, you may be waiting all evening for these. Uh, these emails to transfer, but now it shouldn't take that long, hopefully. So it brings up this WinLink session box, and I'm going to hit start, and that's going to initiate a connection to the servers. Let me see. I can probably zoom this puppy up here. So I'm going to hit start. It's connecting. It has connected, and it starts receiving. So, yeah, we do have a few. <laughs> So I received four messages, I sent zero messages, and I was disconnected. So we're done at this point. We've already uh, done our connection, and now you can see we have received several messages. I have a couple that have attachments on them. Let's see if I can bring up one of the attachments here. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. Quick message format. KPJW sent me a quick message. So thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. Just wanted to help out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put it down again. Why to do that? Keep hitting the wrong thing. And let's see. So this is the message that I sent myself from my uh, email from my home email and this was a, uh, a weather this is a uh, a weather form that I filled out a few days ago as you can see it was uh, 29.1 degrees that day so uh, so this was a weather form I filled out um, and we'll show you the forms I guess I have to do that. I don't know. And let's see. W W eight T F also sent me a test email. Ah, uh, there you go, Stefan. Gotcha. That one was actually sent through the <laughs> W W eight T F packet system. Just to. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So, so there you go. So that's, you know, that's pretty much uh, uh, WinLink in a nutshell there. Uh, so how do you send a message? Well, you go over to message here. You say new message. And it brings up an email client just about look that would look just about like any other email client you've ever used in your life. Um, so you would send a, an email. Let me see. I'm just going to do... What happened? Wow, how to get all the way over there? Hmm. So I have created a message. I don't know why that the two has. Got it. Oh, we'll see if this works. I don't know. It, it, obviously, the message, the uh, email address should be over here on the left, but I don't know why it wants to put it way over there on the right. It must have something to do with the uh, inter with the um, sharing, screen sharing. I don't know. Is there a colon in front of it? Semicolon? 
in front of the camera. There is, but, but I didn't. Oh. Oh. See, it won't let me put a cursor over there. I cannot put the cursor. Hmm. Yeah, that's really strange. I don't know why that's not why that's doing that. See, it wants to go over there on the left. <laughs> It doesn't normally do this. It must have something to do with the uh, the net meeting or the meeting. But well, let's see what happens. We'll post it. So so once you're done with your email, you're gonna hit post to outbox. Okay, now you'll see if I go over here to my outback box on the left hand side and double click it, you will see that I have an email and it does have the uh, address in the right place. So at least that part worked. And you can see down here at the bottom. It's going to K8OED. So now if I go back, and I'm still on Telnet WinLink, I'm going to open a session again. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Connected to the server, one message sent, and, then, and one message was received. So I received another message. And we'll go ahead and close that. So we'll go up at our, and look at our unread message and <laughs> okay great presentation thank you <laughs> it's like jason said in the beginning of the meeting tonight you don't necessarily have to be real good at doing these presentations i'm certainly not a wizard at it but uh, <laughs> uh yeah it, it's it's interesting anyway um especially doing it this way because I had everything set up working really well for the meeting tonight on on site and of course that messed me up but that's okay things happen I'm flexible that's why I'm the uh, emergency coordinator for Summit County I guess I have to be flexible uh, anyway uh, so that's how you do emails now how do we do a form well basically the same way you're gonna open up a new message so you say message new message and down here across the top, right next to post out box, you'll see it says select template. So we're going to hit select template. We're going to open the template set system. And now you're going to see all of these templates in here. And there's uh, all the ICS forms are in here. Uh, in fact, we should be able to find ICS 213RR, the resource request message. That was the one that they used for the Santa message. Uh, for the EMCOM training, but we'll just uh, do we'll do a simple form. Uh, we'll do a general form, and we're just going to do a WinLink check-in form. So you click on the form. Now, what's going to happen is it's actually going to open a browser, and there's your form in a browser. So now all you need to do, and uh, a lot of this stuff is already set up. I'm going to send it to k8oed at winlink.org. Obviously, that wouldn't be where I would send it, but we'll just say that's good for now. Uh, the site operator is KOED. Name is Ken. If you filled out forms before, a lot of this information will already be in there for you, which is really nice. I'm just going to say my location is Summit Mall because that's close enough. If you want to put in a, a note of some kind, this is a note. And then what I recommend doing, I recommend hitting save check-in data. Uh, and it's going, to be, it's going to be whatever form you're using. It'll be save whatever. But if you hit the save, it will actually save that to wherever you tell it to save it to. Now, I usually just have it. I usually just save it in my download directory. So I'm going to save it to my downloads directory. And now that form is saved. So I have a copy of the form that I just sent. And obviously, um, you have to select, like, you know, if it's an exercise or a real event. And uh, see, I screwed up if I was doing, well, actually, no, I didn't screw up because they, they don't have Telnet in here. But if, uh, if I hadn't set the band, then I would have gotten docked some points from the uh, EMCOM folks because you have to tell it, you know, the band that you're going to use. Oh, here, mode, the mode is Telnet. So I'm okay there. Uh, so that's the form. Then once you're done with the form, you're going to hit submit. 
and go ahead and OK that. OK that. And now it looks like nothing happened, and if and the window is going to just go uh, blank, just close your browser and go back to your WinLink. And there's the message that we just created. So now you can see it's going to kadoid at winlink.org. It's a winlink check-in exercise. And all of the information is going to be contained in the message here. Now, when it's received at the other end, then whoever opens the message with winlink uh, will actually see the form itself. They won't see you know, just a, a message with just raw data. The, the form actually comes with the message. So. Uh, so that's the way it works. And then if we do a post out box, we can post it out there and we'll just do a real quick session again. Sent one message and we disconnected so we can close it. And now I'm going to go ahead and close WinLink here. Now I'm going to try something more difficult. <laughs> I'm going to log into, and this will be the end. So we're almost done here, guys. Uh, it's getting, I know it's getting late, so I'm going to close it up. But I'm going to try to uh, log into the, re the uh, machine that's in my shack, and we'll try to do a RF version of it. And I will shut down. Oops. Well, what did I miss? Okay, here we go. Now let's hope it works. Hey, look at that. Okay. Can everyone see this screen? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Did I hear a no? Okay. I guess everyone can see the oh, screen. So I want to, uh, again, okay. So now I'm actually connected to the PC that's connected to my radio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the turn the radio on here. I don't know if... You'll hear the radio or not, but um, so I've got WinLink up. Now I'm going to do a WinLink connection with Vera HF. So we're going to do an open session. And as you can see in Vera or in WinLink, I have a message already waiting in my outbox to send. So there is the WinLink session. It's connected to my radio. It's ready to go. Um, this is actually the Vera screen, the Vera software, and this will tell you a little bit about what's going on. As you can see, I'm getting a VU meter, so I'm actually getting, uh, getting some static out of the radio here. And now that we're set up, what we have to do is we have to select a channel we want to use. So what you're going to do is down here in the WinLink session, you're going to hit channel selection. And this is really nice. Um, this will actually update. I, and I updated earlier today, but usually it updates about every day. And it just gives you an idea of the different paths to stations, to the RSS stations. And I'm going to, um, what you want to do is you want to find one of the better paths. So there's a lot of good paths here tonight. Um, so and there's N2LEE, by the way. That's the one station I was saying. So we're going to try. We're going to try connecting to N2LEE. So to connect, uh, oh, and one thing before I forget, I would recommend not connecting to any of the Canadian stations <laughs> because you may be out of band because the band's plans are different. So I try not to. I try to avoid connecting to the Canadian stations unless I really know I'm in band. But I'm going to connect to uh, try connecting to L. 
M2 LE. So all you have to do is you just have to double click the station connect the uh, call sign. And now the radio has switched to the frequency. And it says it's busy, but I'm not hearing anything. So we're going to try. So we're going to just, so now we're ready to go with the radio. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Channel is busy. Okay, I'll have to wait for a second. Or we don't have to wait. Let's just find another. We'll just find another channel that's not busy at the moment. So let's try uh, W2MMD. Well, he's busy too. Can you hear the audio of the radio in the background? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. I'll turn it up just a little bit, but annoying. Let me try to find a channel that's not busy. Let's try uh, WA3MEZ. He's on 80, me 80 meters. Wow. I obviously picked a bad night to try this. Let me see. Let's try this guy. Right, here we go. Now maybe we can do it. Line close. Thank you. Okay, let's give that a try here. Okay, so I am trying to contact WB3KAS. Watch him not be there. Not sound good. All right, let's try going back to somebody else here. I have this set up to uh, try 15 times before it finally kicks out. I could try W1AW, but I'd rather not. Let's see. If you click on the path reliability estimate that's in blue there, it'll sort it by the estimate so you can ch choose the best one. Right, right, yeah. Well, I'm trying to stay within like the 80 site. Because um... it looked like there were some 97s down below. See, it's not sorted. It's, it's, it's not sorted ascending. Uh, click on the path reliability estimate, and it'll sort it. Yeah. See, there's some 94s. You just, yeah, there's yeah, some 97s. Yeah, I tried to click. I tried, okay, oh, I tried to click on it, and it wouldn't. Uh, yeah, it's not resorting for some reason. But yeah, let's try. Let's try uh, W6IDS. Okay, that sounds good. Let's give that a try. Oh well. Hmm. It's obviously a busy night for uh, digital. Okay, wait. Okay, he's quitting. All right, now let's try it. I think we've got a connection. Yep. Okay, so there's our connection. Uh, now you can see on the screen over here it says KA8 OAD to W6 IDS. So we are now connected. And it says that I have 202 daily minutes remaining.
with W6 IDS. And in a second here, we'll start sending the, uh, the message. So right now we're just doing the handshaking. And then shortly you'll see uh, sending message, sending out box. Okay, now I'm finally, we're finally connected. Now I'm actually sending the message. Now, um, in the session screen, you'll see, you'll start, see a, sorry, start seeing a green line going across this little box here. And that's the uh, amount of time that we've, uh, the amount of data that we've sent. So it should go from one side of the screen to the other. Although it doesn't look like it's transmitting very well. There we go. And we're transmitting, it looks like about eight, 18 bits per second. So <laughs> not the fastest thing in the world. This is probably going to take us about two minutes to, to do the transmit. That's OK. Have at it, man. What's that? What was that? No, I said that's okay if it takes two minutes, just go for it. Okay. I don't know, it may take longer than that. We're sending at 129 bits per minute. <laughs> It's not the fastest connection. There's, I should have connected to a different station. But at least you get the idea. If, uh, does anyone have, while we're waiting, does anyone have any questions? Not a question, but I was just going to share. Um, one of the members of our club, KE8OWX, just set up a packet station, too. It's full-time. John's WW8TF packet is set up as well. Um, and I send a lot of radiograms through the packet system using Winlink. So it's a great system for multi, multi use for lots of different things you can use it for. But I'm definitely going to inve uh, investigate the, um, the Winlink Thursdays. I think that's kind of neat. I didn't know that was there. Otherwise, I would have jumped on that a long time ago. But thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, and um, someone said they didn't know you could see the uh, the RMS stations. If you go to the WinLink um, main page, in fact, I think I can probably go there while this is running. Let me see what happens here. Can I go back? Yeah, I, was, I was just going to add to that. There's a number of WinLink nuts that go on all week long. Yeah, I'm connected on one up with Florida. There's one in Virginia, North Car North California. So there's, a, there's a bunch of them out there if you need practice. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, how do we get back to my you know if there, I can't You know if there's right a there. guide as to what those graphics uh, represent when, when it's transmitting or receiving? I that was that was broken up. I, hang on a second. I 
I tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this connection. It's just way too slow. Yeah, I used that one too, and it's, it's usually a lot faster than that. Let's try something but down around eighty meters. Usually I have a lot of success with N2 LE, but for some reason, I can't, oh, wait, no, oh, there he is. Let's see if we can connect L2, N2 LE. Usually I get really good connections off of him. And also, uh, while we're waiting for that, so if you can't, if you don't, if the software can't control the radio, if you can do the sound card, but you can't control the radio, you just, up, up here, it shows you the dial frequency that you need to set your, your dial to. So you just manually tune your radio to the dial frequency and then uh, go from there. N2LE is usually a, a little bit better for me. Um, not sure why, but we'll see if, it, if we get faster data throughput because that was going to take way too long. It's not a huge picture, but... There we go. Now we're getting a little bit better throughput. Hey, we're up to 80 bits per second. Yeah. Much better connection. Of course, as soon as I say that, it'll drop. See what I tell you. <laughs> Jinx. It's still doing much better than the other other site there we go baby just stay right there just just keep it there All right, I tell you what, this is going to take a little longer than I want to, and I don't want to waste everybody's 
it's time. So anyway, <laughs> that's the idea anyway. Um, but that would, that's uh, basically WinLink in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut down TeamViewer because it messes up my audio. Can I, can I have a suggestion for you for next time? Next time, install the Zoom app and you won't have hardly any issues with any of the stuff that you're planning on doing. It's, it, it's doing it on the web. It takes too much resources and it's, it's yeah, that's the reason. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem with the uh, with everything running. It's just resource a resource hog. So that's it. That's all I had. Um, I hope you learned something about WinLink. And uh, again, uh, anybody that's interested in doing the um, WinLink FEMA drills on uh, Sunday, every other Sunday, uh, send me an email. I'll be happy to uh, pass the email to that I get. Uh, once you uh, send something into the drill, then you'll start getting the emails directly. Um, so usually it just takes a couple weeks, um, but I'll be happy to forward you some emails until you start getting them direct. Um, and uh, any other questions at all on WinLink? No, good. All right. Hey, Ken. This, uh, this okay. Is yeah. Uh, the little graphic display on the right side of the Vera thing, is there somewhere there's an explanation for what some of the things you see on there? Oh, the, the, the box with the, um, it's like, a, a, I don't know what they call it, a Q something or other. Looks like a splatter. I, sometimes there are lines. Sometimes you know it's the, right. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm not certain um, what all that stuff means. Sometimes you get like a like a cross. Like I think it has something to do. I don't know. Maybe um, does anybody know? I guess we don't have any takers. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't know what that box. Uh, it's like the the QPSK or something like that. The way the signal's yeah. coming in, but I don't. I don't really. I know it sure. defines the signal somehow, somehow. But I was wondering if there was some place where you could look up what some of that represents. You know, the dots and the lines and. Right. Yeah. I. 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 I've never found anything to be honest on it, but. All right, gentlemen. Well, thanks for uh, hanging in with me there. And uh, things were <laughs> a little more difficult with the web stuff, but uh, we, we, we managed to get through it anyway. Thank you very much, Ken. That was great. Thank it was you. very interesting. Yeah, yeah thanks, for, thanks oh, very yeah. much, Ken. Very appreciated. Okay. Thanks, Ken. Good okay, job. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Ken. All right, I guess. Everyone have fun. Are we done or is, is okay? Have a good evening. I think we're done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>